How dare you ask this? Are you the devil? Are you working for the devil? <laughs> What's up, you guys? Um, today, I want to take a look at some of the things that I've been like interested in. My birthday's coming up in a couple weeks. And I've been like looking online at some stuff. I went into the stores yesterday to try some of the things on. So I'm gonna have videos of me actually like trying it on, which is really fun. And also like before we get into this, I just like to update you guys on my last video. Um, if you didn't know, I put up this video explaining the situation with Balenciaga and sort of holding space for a conversation to be had. And I did not realize how much mental energy that that was going to take because I literally like posed the question is Balenciaga cancelled? how should we move forward? and I'll get notifications of people being like how dare you ask this? are you the devil? are you working for the devil? and I'm like okay <laughs> so yeah I mean I'm glad I'm happy to see one of my videos actually get like quite a bit of engagement. I'm obviously still very new and early to this. Um, you'll even notice my background's always changing. I'm always working with different lighting because I don't have like an official place that I film. But yeah, if you're new, um, if you found me from that last video and you're here to check out more content that I'm putting out, well, my name's Ishii and I make videos about luxury fashion because I like it. I'm also working on different intros, so. That was the one for this video. <laughs> Anyways, I have my laptop here. Let's get this video started. This is gonna be a sort of like birthday wish list slash winter essentials kind of mood board thing. It's a hybrid video. It's not necessarily my wish list. It's not necessarily a winter mood board for everybody. I guess it's just like these are some cool things that I found and then I went to go like try them on. So all right, so number one, we don't have a men's Dior in San Francisco, unfortunately. The nearest one is like an hour drive away, and I don't drive. So it's gonna be this Dior oblique sweater. Also comes with matching cardigan, and if you didn't know this, it's okay, I didn't know this either. Matching knitwear is actually kind of a huge trend. So like Versace did like cardigans with sleeveless turtlenecks, Dior is doing like sweaters with cardigans um also their new like fall winter 23 features a lot of turtlenecks with jumpers it's matching matching knitwear so i really like this one a lot because my friend actually has this sweater and I, it's just the softest thing i actually did try this one on um not at dior but they had a size small at the real real so i went i tried it on i thought it was magnificent it feels just amazing it's a really nice cotton knit and it's so bouncy and thick and it literally like it literally feels like if your grandma knitted a blanket with sleeves it's just so cozy i like the relaxed fit of it the details up close are also really nice because it's actually um a multicolored dior oblique so I think this one is like really nice because it's giving very fall winter it's, it has really nice oranges browns yellows Another thing from Dior that I'm kind of like, this one's like actually sort of like on my wish list ish is this sleeveless sweater. I've been really into like mohair lately just because I really like the texture of it, but I hate the feeling of mohair on my body. So this felt like a really good sweater because the body is cashmere, but the detailing of the Dior oblique on the front is stitched mohair. So it has like this little like, it has like this nice 3D texture and movement to it. Um, it comes in the blue with pink oblique and then a mauve with a green oblique. Wait, let me double check. Yeah, so like a mauve with a green oblique. And yeah, I just really like it. This one also comes with matching cardigans, so you can see it styled here. That sort of like matching knitwear aesthetic. Uh, I just think it's nice. I think sweater vests are really, really like good pre-spring slash spring if you live in a colder climate sort of like knitwear option i think they make your arms look amazing they're a nice relaxed fit also something about this is just giving like princess vibes i don't know i feel like different brands have different vibes right so when i wear versace i always feel like 
like this like mega whore slut like i'm gonna like stomp on your balls with my stilettos for all your money <laughs> and then like with dior it feels more of like you know like it feels like my dad owns like a billion dollar like doorknob company and i'm like I don't know that's just the vibe i don't know i don't know okay next is prada we also don't have a prada boutique at period in san francisco which is really crazy um but prada i think is really nice when it comes to like designs their knitwear is really cool because they always incorporate really fun sort of groovy 70s 60s psychedelic uh prints so this wool cashmere jacquard sweater is really nice the thing about this sweater, and I think that really makes it like kind of a masterpiece to me, is it, it you can tell um, from the inside that it's constructed the same way as the Dior sweater, where every single color that you see is an individual thread that has been, you know, <laughs> done together. So you have the white threads, the green threads, the black threads, and that's what really makes that other Dior sweater so amazing from like a craftsmanship point of view, is the fact that they created this multicolor ombre detailed you know monogram with individual like threads of wool and just you know all of that and then going along with that matching knitwear prada also offers a scarf in this matching textile so i think that's like i live i literally i live i think that combo is so nice okay so during my outing i also went over to gucci because they were these um cashmere gloves that i really had my eye on and i wanted to try them on they also had this jacket there that i thought was like really nice um over the internet so i went to go scout that as well it was the um jumbo gg monogram jacket uh puffer jacket and i don't know i put it on it was a size small i felt like it was a little bit big for me i i did really like it to be honest i thought that it was nice and i think for the right person it could be really it could be like a really good piece yeah i tried it on i also tried it on with the gloves of course i thought together it looked so nice i also tried the gloves on with the jacket that i was already wearing when i went to the store they paired with that really well too i think the gloves are really nice they come in brown blue black burgundy um and like a pink and i just i honestly i thought that the logo on them was going to be really difficult to pair with things but it's actually kind of low-key you don't notice it that much they're also 100 percent cashmere so i think 520 for 100 percent cashmere like designer gloves is honestly a really good price because for 500 dollars typically what you might get for that is a solid color glove maybe with a little like patch on the wrist or something i also went to louis vuitton uh and i tried on a couple things i tried on this jacket this jacket really blew up on social media specifically in the orange and blue colorway i saw it like on all of like the louis vuitton fan pages uh there's also another color though that's like a dark green teal sort of like vibe and that one I didn't see as much, maybe because it's a little bit more muted, but I really wanted to try it on just because I love green and blue and that sort of vibe. It was okay. I think it was kind of my first experience trying on like a uh, luxury like fleece wear. So maybe my expectations were a little bit higher. Obviously fleece is much different from like mink, right? Or shirling so to me it just felt a little bit cheap it definitely was i mean it was two thousand dollars which is a lot of money but in comparison to other like winter coats from designer brands and also within louis vuitton two thousand dollars is actually on the lower end for jackets uh, which tells me that it really wasn't like that high of a quality but I did find it really nice. I think if they had made it in the white with green version, I think it would be a little bit of a different story, but I can see why. Like they reserved that colorway specifically for the mink zip up jacket, which um, is a fantasy for sure. Uh, but it's a fantasy that costs about 24,000 more dollars. So, <laughs> i really was feeling the jacket though i really did like it i mean in general i just like a nice jacket it was really well insulated 
it wasn't by any means like a bad jacket. Like I'm not saying it was cheap as in like, like it's just way overpriced for what it is. But I just think in comparison to other winter jackets I've tried on, it, I don't think that it gave as much warmth and also like the touch to the skin, like the fleece just, it just wasn't fleecing. I also tried on the new LV Trainer 2s, which are the high top boot sneakers. These ones are actually really nice. I mean, I just, I like a good sportswear moment. Um, and I don't know, I just, I've never seen myself actually in like a high top boot sort of style. And it kind of just made sense to me. I feel like it goes well with pants. It goes really well with shorts and like a long sock moment. Um, I was really feeling it. If I were to get this shoe, it would be in the green and white colorway. I just think the ombre and the colors are really vibrant. The neon green gives it this sort of like bioluminescent feel. Like it's almost glowing. The color that I tried on was the black and like purple and pink and it was just so ugly. Like I would never get it. It was so ugly but I just tried it on for size. And then I also tried on these LV skate sneakers. These ones are brand new. They literally just came in the store that day. They are the new like wide skate shoes that every brand is doing right now. The interesting thing about them is that we're used to like a chunky sneaker, right? Like a very chunky sole. So I thought that these were going to be sort of like a platform, but they're actually not platform shoes. All of the chunk is actually on the top of the shoe rather than the bottom. So they're totally like a normal sneaker in terms of like height but they do have a lot of heft to, to them in terms of like the pillowiness of the tongue and then the laces are also very like cartoonishly large uh these ones were really nice i definitely am interested in getting a pair but i am waiting for the candy version which the essay told me is coming out in america on the 9th of january i think those ones are just really cool they have like a really youthful vibe to them i really love like the little like candies that they put on the uh, on the laces i think virgil was always really inspired by rave wear and as someone who has a lot of like memories during my rave days um i i'm all for it i think candy is such a fun youthful thing i wish more brands would incorporate like candy aesthetics into what they do yeah and then last thing from louis vuitton was this mask i wasn't able to try it on it said that they had it in stock in the store but all she could find was the nba mask which i just i'm not a fan of uh, but this mask is really interesting to me it looks like a nice thick cotton i feel like it would go with everything the thing about masks is they are actually so amazing for the winter because one, you get to have this sort of like covering for your face so the wind isn't blowing against you as much. Two, your air is blowing back in to your face so you're getting like all this hot heat sort of being kept around your mouth. And three, winter is when a lot of people get sick. I mean, regardless of COVID, in Asia, people have been masking for like decades. So. It's a pretty common thing over there to mask when you're sick or in the winter on public transportation, uh, regardless of COVID. So I've gotten sick many times since being back in America. And I was sick literally never when I was in Taipei. So I don't know. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to try it on, but that's also something that's definitely on my list. I think it's a good like basic to have. It's a great winter accessory. It's like literally black monogram, bring it out every single season for the rest of your life. Um, it's cotton, it's washable, reusable. It's a great fashion piece. It's great to keep warm even outside of like whether you believe in the efficacy of masks when it comes to like protecting yourself from getting sick. It's still a cool fashion moment and that should be respected. All right, and then I went to Fendi and I wasn't particularly looking for anything in Fendi. I think I just wanted to see what they had. I would say the star of my visit to Fendi though had to be this poncho. I had seen it online and I, I mean, I've always been kind of interested in Fendi ponchos, but I was just like, ah, like whatever. Like, you know, I can go to like the Mission District in San Francisco and get like a really cool poncho for like 50 bucks. And even that's already a lot. Like they're already like definitely overcharging me for it. But then to go get a poncho for like $2,000 is kind of like, okay, like how good is this poncho, you know? It was really good. It was really good. She took a picture of me and I just, 
it was so fun. I don't know, like, I'm really trying to think, like, I can buy something for my birthday, I could be a little bit more patient and wait and maybe get something else. So, I, you know, I don't like to, like, buy things, like, right away, especially I feel like my birthday is in the really weird part of the year where it's, like, if I buy something that's new during my birthday, it's usually, like, a pre-spring item. And personally, I feel that pre-spring and pre-fall tends to not be as exciting as, like, actual, like, spring-summer runway pieces. So maybe I should just wait until spring-summer runway starts to drop in January. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of, like, hybrid video. It was initially supposed to be a shopping vlog slash wishlist video slash, like, winter mood board. And then I just kind of jumbled it all into one because I was like, ah, I don't know. To the people who found me recently, oh my god, thank you for watching again. Thank you for supporting. Um, and to the people that have been watching, oh my god, thank you for watching me grow. And, like, also thank you for supporting. So, yeah, I'll see you guys um, on the next video.